Okay, hello everybody. Uh, I have Larry from Iotex here. And we're good, just gonna have some nice conversations about the potentials of combining uh, Cartesi with Iotex, potential use cases, and what interesting stuff we can do with it. Absolutely. It's great to be here in Dubai. It's great to meet you in person, Milton. We've had so many amazing discussions in the past. So yeah. let's dive into some cool use cases that Cartesi and Iotex can do together. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just to introduce things. So Iotex actually uh, is able to provide like trusted uh, data from, from sensors, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Iotex, we're a layer one blockchain, got started back in 2017 and built out this layer one that's EVM compatible but we add some IoT oriented middleware on top of this layer one, specifically device identity yeah. and device oracles, a uh, way to verify that the device that's sending data to the blockchain is trustworthy. And basically the device oracles translate what a device is saying into something that the blockchain can understand. So that's kind of the tech stack that enables, but there's only so many things that smart contracts can do, which is mm -hmm. where Cartesi comes in to bring in the programmability uh, using languages that people uh, like to program in. So uh, that's kind of where the, the tech stacks uh, intersect. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's given this second layer where it's not, you have this programmability, you can use uh, with, uh, an entire Linux operating system to, to do whatever processing you want. But it's also, of course, scaling, right? So uh, one thing that happens is that uh, sometimes uh, the amount of data you need to do the analytics on kind of gets too big or even if, if, the, if the input data isn't that big, I guess one thing that we often want to do is just compare this input data with some data set that can be very large, right? Yeah. And that's just, just unfeasible with in a regular yeah. smart contract. We're talking about like uh, a person that owns their vehicle data or their wearables data or weather station data, right? Um, this data set is not going to be too big, but to really extract insights, you have to compare and yeah. contrast this with massive data sets, right? Exactly. You think about uh, a weather insurance example or farm insurance example. Maybe you will have the history of how much rain has fallen on your farm or how much uh, what the temperature in your area has been. But if you want to compare and contrast that with a 30 year historical average mm -hmm. to understand if you qualify for some farm insurance claim, then we're talking about big, big, big data sets, literally big data, right? Yeah. So um, these are things that normal smart contracts can't really process. And a lot of this has to do with AI and machine learning and exactly. you know, how do we extract the insights in a verifiable way, which is why we love you guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, tr truly uh, within the Cotella machine, you could have like gigabytes in your data set. That's not a problem at all. Mm -hmm. And it's also true that you can have like some fancy stuff going on. So. Um, if the historical data that comes from the farm, for instance, it's not just, is it below a certain temperature, not a simple computation like that. You could do some fancy stuff. Oh, what's the crop? Yeah. Is, is the crop, uh, how long can I stay on this temperature? Or is this profile that happened during uh, this uh, season? Mm -hmm. Is it enough like to certainly spoil the crop? And, and do we need to give insurance for that? So exactly. when you're talking about insurance, right? I yeah. guess normally, it's not a naive thing. The guy really needs to do some complex operations to be sure that there's a payout to be, to yeah. be given to the guy, right? So um, yeah, no, that, something that, that I think mm -hmm. often happens that you start implementing stuff and then you realize that you, it's, it's just too complex to, to put in a smart contract, right? So yeah. that's so where we... Where IOTEX's work starts and ends is you know, we try to give these devices identities, allow them to uh, index data in a way that a D app can ingest. Yeah. And then we need to work with, you know, partners with domain expertise about how to actually use this data to, tr to in trigger these web three incentive models that we all dream about. Right. Yeah. But the truth is, you know, when we think about things like insurance, it's not really about smart contracts anymore. We're talking about actuarial science, data science yeah. about how do you really cross analyze, cross reference, and create your own methodologies for what yeah. claims or qualifications these things make, right? So um, I've worked a little bit with insurance companies in the past, and this is you know hardcore mathematics, right? Yeah. That you know uh, solidity can't really uh, power, or maybe in the future smart contracts would be able to do some of this stuff, but the traditional programming languages that everything else that 
major insurances, insurance companies have coded this in, Linux, Python, um, et cetera, yeah. uh, bringing, that, bringing those algorithms to blockchain today is what we're talking about, right? So it really opens up this brand new design space uh, where you can prove facts about the real world to the blockchain and also analyze them and uh, just expand what's possible, yeah. Yeah, it's great because uh, uh, we have this in Cartesia all, all this uh, 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 potential of doing this this processing and stuff, but you bring the real world data, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something that's really hard to get. And yeah. since we get the real data, and then yeah, as you said, um, insurance companies sometimes have these complex methodologies that, that are like they they evolved for for a long time. Yeah, decades. they have things implemented with algorithms and models and stuff. And they can just port the same thing to run because if it runs on Linux, it can run as a machine. So they yeah, I think like we're in the age of blockchain now, where things are starting to get very interesting, right? Where every piece is important. IoTechs, we know our role is you know about trusted, verifiable, and user-owned data, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that also needs to be contrasted with maybe data from uh, something like a Chainlink would bring in, right? Chainlink yeah. has all these integrations to. Uh, weather APIs, like weather, mm -hmm. weather, weather channel API and uh, sure. uh, big query data sets, right? So that's what their contribution is. They're bringing more of the historical data into mm -hmm. the picture. But you need an environment where all of this stuff can live and can be cross-referenced, right? And that's where Cartesi comes in. And there's other maybe stacks on top of that. Maybe people are doing the AI algorithms that, yeah, you sure. know, it's not our job to write those AI algorithms, <laughs> exactly. but it's all piecing these things together in a way that's very logical. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy even to imagine people redoing everything that's been built for, for, for the last 10, 20 years. And it, yeah, working, it is. Right? It's not even just rebuilding, but it's like redefining uh, really the bottoms up Web3 methodologies, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, weather is interesting to people like us, maybe not <laughs> interesting to everyone, but, you know, thinking about you know, your location and cross referencing that to these giant map data sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even thinking about healthcare and wellness data and genomic data and how all those kind of define a digital profile or a digital health profile about you. Uh, how does that redefine health insurance? Mm -hmm. um, and That's it doesn't true. always have to be insurance, but you know, proving facts uh, about your comp uh, position in the world against others. This is how people define incentives, right? Want you to progress along the spectrum of what uh, good or great is across these different verticals, so. Yeah. yeah. There's even a case of, of, of sometimes uh, having like some, some public governance and transparency, like for instance, you, that example of the, of the, the tolls for the trusted trip. So if you have mm -hmm. your GPS data trustedly coming from, 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 from your, your vehicle, mm -hmm. and you could have just uh, uh, an analytics on top of that, which is just cross crossing that information with um, areas in which there's congestion zone or, or something like it's a toll bridge or something like that. And if mm -hmm. you know that the car has been there, then there's a toll to be paid. And that's just something that could be publicly uh, 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 transparent, like people can know there's, there's a, and they don't need to bother anymore about yeah. other things. So it just gets automated that way. Definitely. You know, Web3 to me is all about, or to everyone, is all about incentives, right? There's always someone that's incentivizing someone to do something that they wouldn't necessarily do on their own. Mm -hmm. And when you think about the incentives that we have today, uh, I'm from the United States, there's a lot of these like car insurance companies that will lower your insurance rate if you don't get in an accident. And that's yeah. a very broad incentive, right? Maybe you're such a bad driver and no one wants to drive <laughs> next to you, then you're not going to get in an accident. But these kind of uh, ideas, we can make it more granular, yeah, right? Sure. Um, wear your seatbelt. A car's ECU can tell you that. Never go over the speed limits. Um, and again, you can create your own methodologies for what this looks like. But you know where Cardesi comes in is you start to need, you need to calculate this stuff mm -hmm. um, in order to drive these incentive models, right? Um, so uh, th these kind of frameworks and ideas are you know when we start to bring in the real world data aspect into it, not just the things we can do in the digital world, but incentivize people's actions in the real world. It's just a really exciting design space that you know we have been working on for a long time, and you guys will be part uh, part of for a long time in the future too. So, uh, just getting started with all of this stuff. Yeah, it's very exciting, and yeah. 
And on the technical side, there's a, a nice thing that you, you're already EVM compatible. And since we have already implemented our smart contracts there, mm -hmm. so we are layer two on top of any EVM compatible mm -hmm. network. And since you're there, so yeah. integration is, is, is there around the corner. You know what's really interesting also is you guys can be almost like a cross-chain analytics bridge for many EVM chains in the future. I'm not sure how exactly <laughs> that looks architecturally, but imagine supply chain data from IOTEX from like an asset tracker or a sensor being combined with uh, some supply chain documentation from Avalanche or you know um, even some other types of information from Ethereum, right? Yeah. Hosting it into uh, you know Cartesi VM and cross-referencing all different types of data or categories of data. This is where the real insights and the real intelligence uh, will be started to form, not from the top down, but from the bottoms up in true Web3 fashion. So I think there's a lot of crazy ideas that aren't so crazy anymore. You know, yeah. you know we started talking maybe back a year ago and uh, brainstorming on these calls. And you know, it's good to finally share our insights with the, the communities. But um, these ideas are starting to become very real. Yeah, we feel like it's converging, right? You yeah. Know, everything's converging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's easy also to get carried away so because the thing is converging, the technology is maturing, but still there are things that are not like in, in the such near uh, side. Mm -hmm. So for one, one instance is that we ourselves often think, okay, so now I can dance, like find out what's the best restaurant around here. Right. Uh, and that's not a web free application exactly because uh, it's still blockchain as it is, it's, mm -hmm. it's not real time. So mm -hmm. you, you don't, just send your, your input and in and second later you get the results of an analytics done in a decentralized network all over the world. It's not really like that, yeah. at least for now. Mm -hmm. So um, so the application that I imagine is like this, right? You, you get insurance or you get incentives and, and, and you get their profiles, but it's something that can happen like in minutes time or hours time and yeah. you don't need it like right there. Mm -hmm. But who knows, in the future, maybe the technology will evolve that that thing is possible too, and you can have like a decentralized Uber or something. I think so. You know, I think what we're talking about now is uh, in the DeFi space, it's really interesting to think about all the history of data that's been collected about a specific blockchain address. There was something called the DGEN score back in the day, where you analyze what smart contracts a blockchain address had interacted with, and if they're touching a lot of yield farm smart contracts, then mm. you have a high DGEN score type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. But when we start to bring in things to associate with your blockchain address that are things that you've done in the real world, whether it's places you visited or how healthy you've been or how well you drive, right? This is forming a digital health or a personal profile mm -hmm. that's linked to your blockchain address that over time is going to be appended not transform, right? You're kind of, it's kind of like a credit history yeah. in the traditional world. And those things aren't, you don't need this stuff to be real time because you're collecting sure. the history over a long exactly. period of time, constantly cross-referencing it maybe every day to see you know, how far you're progressing, right? And the really interesting part is once you have these calculations and these insights, the token incentives that are linked to them, uh, you, know, you can pay people to live better lives whatever way you know, whatever that's defined as, right? A lot that would of people be a have, revolution for public yeah. health, right? Right, right. Yeah. Public health or just the way that, you know, um, it, it's always about who is incentivizing who to do what, right? We think about governments incentivizing their people, uh, em, like employers incentivizing their employees. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the funny use cases that we've been talking a lot about is sleep to earn. Sounds stupid, <laughs> but imagine your that's employer good. wants you to sleep better uh, and they'll have a resource pool where if you prove to the blockchain you've gotten seven hours of sleep on a Sunday and you wake up fresh on a Monday, you can claim tokens from that pool, right? Or <laughs> over time, if you have a multiplier and you're proving that you're a great sleeper, then you can earn some tokens, right? So these, these right. it sounds ridiculous, but... Sleep to it's, earn. It's <laughs> sleep to earn. It, blank to earn, right? But um, all of these kind of analytics, you know, the, the calculations about like what the data actually means. Again, it's very full stack in that way, right? Yeah. Uh, requires layer one technologies, layer two technologies, on-chain, off-chain data, public-private data. Uh, it's just a nice environment for all this stuff to happen. So, yeah. yeah. The funny thing about this, this area is that 
you're not really sure about anything that's going to happen, mm -hmm. but you're pretty sure that something big is going to happen, right? Yeah. It's all there. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what I've up. experienced this, you know, I've been in Dubai for a couple of weeks and uh, I think this part of the world is a little behind the West as far as the sophistication of some of the, the projects that are coming out. But when you tell them these things, their eyes light up, right? Because they've never heard these concepts before. You know, some, I think uh, some of these concepts are very fascinating to the very deep Web3 crowd. Uh, but now we're at East Dubai, so everyone's kind of, you know, melting pot from all the different parts of the world. But last week we went to some very traditional uh, blockchain conferences where you tell them these ideas and things they've never really imagined. But it's not just science fiction anymore that you're pitching yeah. them. These are like things I think we're going to see in the next 3, 6, 9, 12 months. So, um, yeah, it's interesting to see the evolution of where, we, where, where, we, where, where we've been and now where we're going. So, yeah. Great. Great awesome. conversation. So we had this nice talk with, with Larry. I think it was great exploring these possibilities in the future and in the near future. Mm -hmm. It's getting some conversions together. It's big things are coming up. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Great. See you next time, man. Yeah, see you next time. We're going to do some great things together very soon. Sure. Awesome. Bye, folks.